Hey, what up, everybody? Little uh, unplanned, not unplanned. We've been planning this for months, Lauren. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, and we tend to do that. It takes us a long time to get cooking. So for um, I'm Drew Linsalata, creator and host of the Anxious Truth Podcast. Sitting next to me is... Lauren Rosen, licensed marriage and family therapist and uh, at the obsessive mind on, on the old Instagram platform. Very good. We have all the fancy tools here. So I'm going to put that right up on oh. the screen. So, <laughs> I, we are not kidding around here. This is very fancy. It is very fancy. So you guys should be following Lauren. If you're not, she's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we had a conversation that popped up like a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. about the, this is really hard thing. This is really yeah. hard. And it is really hard. Yeah. So I, I think we want to have a little discussion about like, where is the line between always acknowledging that it, you're doing hard things? And this is really hard. No doubt. You can't lose sight of that. And getting where you take this is hard to the point where it becomes a, an obstacle and a sticking point. Totally. It's so important. Uh, this sort of being able to stop and say, okay, like, I, yes, it's hard. And and at what point does that cease to be somewhat unimportant? Is that a strange thing to say? You know, I think this is such a hard topic because it's not unimportant, but it it is clearly important to all of us. We don't want to do hard things, but when does it when is when do you have to move past that statement at a certain point? Absolutely. And to be clear, I, I agree. It is important and it's important to acknowledge, but I think in your own mind, I know in my own mind that mm. there came a point where I knew it was hard, but if I was going to sort of live in that narrative around, oh, this is so hard. I can't do this, that it was, it was interfering with my ability to move forward. And I see that happen so often for people. And I think that's, you know, clumsily what I mean when I say something, you know, like unimportant is like, yeah. at what point, well, actually, I actually pulled up a quote. This is how Ooh. I go. Um, that is one of my favorites. It's M Scott Peck. I don't know if you ever read the book, the road less traveled. Yes. Came out like, you know, whatever in the eighties. Right. Um, but he says, life is difficult. This is a great truth. One of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once we truly see this truth, we transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult. Because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. I mean, that's oh. kind of my mic drop. <laughs> like, yeah, we're done. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that that's really that's actually a really good quote. I don't remember that from the book. I'll send it to you. It's yeah. a yeah. It's, really it's good. um a good one. And I think that's it, it's all of the mindfulness stuff and I know that you are big into meditation too, although we've never really had a conversation about mindfulness meditation and all of that. But. It's a, um, for me, it's a focus skill. Like it's part of the, the ability to put your focus somewhere, which is fine. It's different things for different people. That's how I use it. But, I think that that's primarily how I use it. And then also to add this sort of non-judgmental element to the awareness, which I think can be really important. And, and when it comes to this kind of topic, right? Like recognizing, oh yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm feeling really anxious and I'm noticing that this is challenging, right? Yeah. And, like, flexing some muscles that I'm not used to flexing. Well, and, I, that's part of this though. Flexing muscles that I'm used to, like expecting it to be hard, I think is important. Moving, one of the things that I find that moved me past, this is so hard, and it was, was the realization that, oh, I, it's supposed to be hard. I need it to be hard. Like, yeah, which is a shitty deal in plain English. It's like, it's a crappy deal, but it's a deal we got. And I needed it to be hard. And so therefore I should just expect it to be hard. And yeah. I was able to get frustrated by how difficult it was, but I stopped speaking that out loud to a certain extent. And I just stopped leaning on that so hard. I would acknowledge it and let myself be frustrated sometimes, but, but I, but it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard. And so. Right. Yeah. Right. And accepting that and allowing that to be present without it being to your point with the, the mindfulness of meditation as a focus activity, right? Like not letting it be the central focus of everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I think for many people at, at points that it's, it's almost a mantra and 
it it can again sort of switching that and into the we can do hard things and and I love I know you do a fair amount of work with Kimberly and like it's a beautiful day to do hard things and I'm so behind that. Mm. Uh, and I think that what you're saying about it, that being sort of the expectation that it's going to be hard. And that's why I love that quote so much because, and acceptance and commitment therapy, which is big in my work, mm -hmm. because it comes from the, the vantage point of, of course it's hard, right? Like the expectation that it shouldn't be hard is actually the problem. Oh, Not that's the mic drop. That's the, right there. <laughs> That's the part right there. Um, that is, I could not agree with that more. You're right. And, and and I do understand why people expect that because none of us want it to be hard, but that's such a difficult thing to have to keep saying to people. It's supposed to be hard. Like yeah. or you're, you're shooting at the wrong goal. If you're trying to do this in an easy way or that you're trying to find a way for it to be easy, it will get easier over time, but not right now. We got to start with the hard stuff. We got to do yeah. it scared and it's hard. Uh, one of the things that, that helped me too is, um, I, I am a huge hockey fan. I have been my whole life. So ice skating and being on the on the ice and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. When you if you play hockey or you skate, whether it's indoors or out, it's cold. You're yeah. you're on the ice. It's cold. So there's no sense complaining that you are cold when you are ice skating because if you go ice skating, it will be cold. That's just part of the deal. And it that was a thing that sort of helped me and like, hey, I, I if I'm gonna skate, I know I'm gonna be cold. There's no sense in me repeating it's cold, it's cold, it's cold. If it's, I'm going to make that the most important thing in the room, then I'm missing the part where I'm playing hockey or I'm skating. So, yeah. Uh, what a great metaphor. That's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. That's it. It's like, yeah. Okay. And that's, I think at, at that point, that's again, that, that sort of, w do we want that to matter? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. cold. Okay. What am but I going to do? Right. What am I going to do? And here's this amazing experience, right? I mean, I've never played hockey, but I've watched it and I can imagine it's a pretty cool experience to have. I mean, honestly, in addition to the cold, just the sort of chucking your body at uh, other what people and having people chuck their bodies at you. I mean, that's, you know, that's like, a large person may crush me against the wall. Like, yes, that's hard too. So. <laughs> There's lots of, lots of challenging hard. things hard involved. Um, um yeah, or yeah. ice skating with any sort of coordination. That's also uh, an amazing skill. But but yeah, that that element of, okay, this is it. What do I want to do while this is challenging? And I, I think one of the beautiful things about recovery is the element of empowerment, which people don't necessarily, and we, we hear all the time about how hard ERP is, which it is. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that coin is that doing ERP or um, facing our fears generally feels so empowering. If, and and that, oh yeah, like, and, and so you walk out the other side feeling more capable than you, you ever thought you were. And yeah. Yeah. That's the willingness though, to learn the lesson of the difficulty. So yeah. I know that's one of the things that sometimes I see people get stuck on. Like it's, yes, it's difficult and yes, it's scary, but reality is showing you at the end of that session, the end of that exposure or whatever it may look like that you did it. Like yeah. nothing bad happened. Your, the thought didn't come true or the, the fear of your symptom didn't come true. Whatever it happens to be, you did it. You went through it. And as yeah. opposed to telling that story in retrospect that it was so hard, it was so hard, it was so hard. Yeah, it was, but nothing happened and I did it. When you are willing to accept the lesson that reality hands you, which is I did it and nothing bad happened, it is superhero level like R, like yeah, yeah, that 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 rush of like yeah, bring it, you know, <laughs> yeah, bring it on, and and that's where recovery comes from is the freedom to feel anything, not from the reduction of the hard things, but in the the sort of strengthening in the face of hard things. You're on fire today. Oh, freedom, thanks. Freedom, freedom to feel everything. That's <laughs> another good one. We're just chock full of great quotes. Here well, me. you're on fire too. So look, we're just, we're spitting fire. That's Actually, what I, the cool I kids say. Ice. I really wasn't. We're spitting fire. <laughs> I was on ice. <laughs> so, fire and ice. Fire wow. And ice, hey, this is the combo that we want here. This is what you're getting <laughs> with two for one today, people. <laughs> uh, oh, good. So let me ask a silly question. You, now you're working clearly without, you know, uh, breaking confidentiality or, or any ethical 
boundaries. Yeah. When you're working with a client and they hit that sticking point of it's just, yeah, but it's really hard or I'm really struggling. And I think if this is hard has multiple expressions. This mm -hmm. is hard. It feels so scary, but mm -hmm. it feels so real. I'm yeah. really struggling. Like those are different expressions of the same idea. This is really hard. Definitely. How, how do you cajole that person through that at some point? Mm -hmm. Draw the line, like, okay, that's it. We're not doing that anymore now. Well, I think it depends on the person, but there are some times where I'm, I'm kind of firm in session. I'm like, I think we got to take that, that word out of session entirely. We just, I, I don't know that there's any benefit to us continually. I see you. I'm, I know that it's hard because I, you know, and I, I probably should have mentioned this before I, you know, this, but, um, I'm in recovery as well as, you know, supporting people through recovery and my, my practice as a therapist. Um, but yes, it's hard. And also at like, like we've been saying, I think at a certain stage with clients, if, if they're getting stuck in that, then I'm going to encourage us to maybe take a step back and say, you know, if, if that thought comes in great, that's fine. You can accept it. You can acknowledge it, but perhaps we don't necessarily need to keep going back to that because it's almost, it's an, it's like an escape route. It's like, mm -hmm. but it's so hard, right? Like that, or it's too much or I can't do it. And, um, not only does it interfere with the ability to show up and do it, but it's, this message that you're continually sending to yourself when you're sort of engaging with those thoughts that you're not capable. Right. And, and I'm not willing personally, and I've, I've said this to more, more than one of my clients that I'm not, I'm not willing to stand by, uh, and allow somebody to speak poorly of themselves or allowing, uh, not acknowledging their own capacity because they've probably been doing that for their entire life to some greater or lesser extent. I know, again, from my own personal experience that that was certainly the case for me until somebody was like, whoa, that's just a thought. Like you don't, you don't have to take that seriously. And yeah. you know, then I practiced a lot of meditation and mindfulness to try and get some space for my thoughts. And then I was like, oh, they're right. They are their thoughts. And I don't, I don't have to go down the rabbit hole with any of them. Yeah. Um, that space between the thought and the action is always so important too. Sometimes I, I will try and tell people to like, okay, when you're, when you're overwhelmed by, with the desire and the com almost compulsion to talk about how hard and scary and difficult it is, just give it 90 seconds, like literally 90, like time it on your and See if you can yeah. just hold that for 90 seconds and don't indulge that and see. And sometimes that's really like, oh, I'm not supposed to bottle up my feelings. No, 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 not, not saying that at all. Yeah. But it, I find it particularly frustrating too, when there's the, this is too hard, this is too scary. So I won't do it. That's one thing. And now you have to cheer for the person. No, no, you can do it. I know you can do it. You got to give it a try. But the person who is doing it and mm -hmm. still gets stuck on, but it's really hard. But but you did it. But you look, you did it. You right. actually did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough one. I love, though, that you're sort of differentiating between people who are getting stuck and, and not necessarily moving forward with the work and how that... Uh, offers an opportunity for becoming a cheerleader and, and reminding them of their capacity versus on the other side. Well, wait a second. And you're doing it right. Yeah. Um, what I hear a lot is that it's hard and my anxiety isn't going away, which of course is, it's so funny. It's like when people come to see me and I imagine when people get in contact with you, the first thing that they're about is like, Oh, how do I get rid of my anxiety? It's like, yeah. Ooh, I have so, I have such bad news. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, I hate to lead with the bad news, but yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, but I love that, that, that you're sort of putting it into these sort of two camps or categories of like, yeah in the aftermath, acknowledging that you are do it, doing it and that you're able to be with the anxiety because that's the win. Right. Yeah, that's I think that's actually maybe three stages. You know, that mm -hmm. first stage is it's too hard and I won't do it. I'm stuck. I, I, I can't get started. The second stage is I'm doing it, but I'm still going to talk about how hard it is. You're not. And then you have to, you, as you progress, you finally start to allow reality to show you. I don't even, you don't have to believe it. Like, well, I wish I could believe it. Well, you don't have to believe it. Like reality is telling you. 
And then the third stage is the one that you just talked about, which I missed, which you're right. I'm doing it. Yes, I see that I'm doing it, but my anxiety isn't going away. That's like stage three. Yeah. That's when you yeah. start to learn like, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Now I just have to wait and be persistent and practice this and yeah. it will hopefully go away. It's, I think it's, it's sort of a natural progression. That's what everybody goes through. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I also liked what you said about the 90 seconds. Um, are you familiar with Jill Bolte Taylor at all? I am not. So she is a neuroanatomist and out of, I want to say Yale. Uh, so knows far more about the brain than I do. She actually wrote a book and has a Ted talk called my stroke of insight. And she had a stroke and as a neuroanatomist, yeah, she watched herself have the experience and understanding like all of the component pieces of it. Uh, super fascinating and interesting book in the book. She talks about the fact that from start to finish, emotions last for 90 seconds, which I think is really interesting, right? Yeah. It's, um, happy coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and she talks about basically like the chemical release it from start to finish. It's 90 seconds. Of course, every time that you reignite that chemical yeah. release, it's yeah. another 90 seconds. Yep. But I've, I've always found that to be really helpful too. in a, in the recognition of the emotional experience that you're having right now is going to shift if you allow it to, if you allow it to just be present, if you accept it, if you don't feed it with a bunch of thinking, mm -hmm. which unfortunately we, we do most of the time. Almost automatically, right? Yeah. It's really hard to not do that. Yeah. That's where is. the meditation and the mindfulness practice comes in, in many ways. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. The ability to say like, oh, I'm thinking and then dropping it and coming back to the present, that is that's hard. And this, this is why you're my people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking. I can't tell you the number of times a day I write that in a comment somewhere. Let me rephrase. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking. Oh, look. Oh, yeah. Look there it is. That's right. I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> Again, I mean, it's funny because I meditate daily, not for very long, but I do meditate daily. Yeah. And I, when I talk to clients, they're like, well, I'm still thinking. I'm like, yeah guess what? I've been meditating for years <laughs> and, and I get lost in thought relatively quickly because song that's lyrics. what minds do. Song yeah. lyrics. I, I don't know why song lyrics. I will find I, the same thing. I've been at this for years. Hmm. It's, you know, six minutes into a 10 minute meditation. It's like, why am I, why am I thinking of all, <laughs> like a Barry Manilow song of all things? <laughs> Thank you. There's no rhyme or reason <laughs> to that. I haven't heard Barry Manilow in years and years and years and years, but it's in my head. Mandy. Why is Mandy? In my I, I was just going to say, was it Mandy? That's no amazing. Reason. We are thinking but, machines. It's what we do. It is what we do. It's, it's what this thing specializes in. It's just, you don't want to be at the whim of the brain thing. Cause it's sure. limited. It's very limited, very, very limited. All right. So we're about 20 minutes into it. That's probably a decent size, a decent length here. A lot of yeah. good stuff here, but in the end the the, I think the lesson hopefully people can take away is yes, it is hard. Yes, it is scary. Yes, it is difficult. It is all those things. Always acknowledge because if you're going to try to pretend it's not that super frustrating, it is. Totally. And when you struggle, knowing that it's hard and expecting it to be hard, <clears throat> excuse me, helps you to be nicer to yourself about that. I'm doing a hard thing. Let me acknowledge that. Yeah. Then we, then we got to move past it. So you take it from there. What happens next? Yeah. Well, are you mean me or are you mean yeah. whoever's listening? Well, whoever's listening, <laughs> what would you tell them? So I'm going to tell them, yes, it's really hard. And yes, yes it's really hard. Like but where's the line that you draw that you cannot keep leaning on? This is hard. Right. And that's, uh, and the, I think the thing too, is that a bit, especially with the, the piece about what we were talking about, about the, the feelings, um, still being there and not going away. And that the sort of that third stage yeah. that it it's, it's about recognizing too that feelings are constantly shifting if we don't latch on, if we allow them to, to do their thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's not so much about trying to change them. It's about learning to ride the waves and then waiting for the seas to calm and then riding the waves. And you, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I yeah. think when we get out of the, it's hard narrative and, and dialogue in our own minds, then it, it makes space for, I'm just going to be with whatever is. Right. And I'm going to do so non-judgmentally. I'm going to see like, okay, yeah, 
I'm with this thing. I'm, you know, I'm calling it challenging right now. And it's saying there's anxiety, which is, you know, the fluttering in my heart and the, the lump in my throat and the, the lifting in my belly. And okay, well, I'm just gonna, you know, be with that until, until the next one comes along. And it's really that capacity to, to be with that as, as long as it needs to be around. Um, maybe that's sort of the, the end game. Um, Probably. but yeah. Without, without resorting to hitting the part in the pun, the panic button or the eject button. I'm feeling, yeah. I'm thinking, eject. get out, get yeah. out, get out. Totally. Oh, we, we need to do more of these for sure. This, I'm in. Always a, I love talking with you. Always. A regular thing if we can manage that. I would love that. I so on the screen, good. I have our respective, because what you might be listening on my Instagram or my YouTube or whatever. Which, but, yeah. yeah since, since you did the intro, I got to say, if you're not following Drew and you're like watching this on my Instagram, make it happen. He's the business. And the not anxious, not truth. There's periods in there. So. Yes. Yeah. The period the anxious period, period anxious. truth period not period except for not. <laughs> no, not period. hold the period <laughs> hold the, that's it hold the period only two dots in there but anyway thank you lauren i appreciate you thank taking you time. Always likewise so much. yeah always fun really soon. all right guys if you have comments or questions where you ever happen to be i guess put them there and we'll do the best we can to catch up with them indeed all, all right, right. See you bye next time.